What's up guys? We're back for another Mythic Legion's Advent of Decay review. Today we're taking a look at a figure that I've gotten a tremendous number of requests for despite not being one that I was overly excited about. Uh, so today we're taking a look at Juno the Crusher. This is obviously one of the female figures in the line, one of the female barbarian type figures. So we got her there in the standard packaging. You can see her in that big window. We do have a bio for her on the side. And then the back has that same artwork we've seen on every figure so far. So let's pull her out and take a look. All right, guys, here we go. In my attempt to give at least some of you what you want, here is the requested Juno the Crusher figure out of the package. And, you know, this is one that I haven't been too crazy over, but I'm interested to see what she has in store. Of course, we're going to take a look at articulation, see how she moves around, but I have a feeling I know exactly what we're getting into here. So, of course, we'll start at the head. Uh, it's on a ball peg. It's a bobble side to side. She can't really go back. She's got a full head of hair, so that's not too surprising. She can look down, and then you can swivel as far as her hair will allow you. Arms go all the way out. They swivel at the shoulder. We've got swivel at the elbow with a single jointed hinge, and it's basically 90 degrees. Swivel at the gauntlet, swivel at the wrist, and then we've got a uh, hinge as well. We have got an upper diaphragm joint, so she can swivel side to side, back and forth a little bit, and then bobble a bit. We do have a waist twist in there. Legs go all the way out. They kick forward, they kick back. There is a, a cut in there so you can swivel at that joint. We've got a, a hinging knee, so single jointed hinge there, pretty standard, 90 degrees-ish. And then you can rotate in there as well. And then we've got a rotation, a rocker, and a hinge down at the ankle. So if you've seen one Mythic Legions female, you know exactly what she has in store. It's uh, pretty much the standard articulation scheme for this line. I'm sure articulation is not what people really want to see here because, in general, she's pretty unique as far as some of these figures go because she is a mostly naked female barbarian style figure. Kind of a Red Sonia vibe going on here. And, you know, like I said, I haven't been too crazy about this figure. It's just not a look that I really care about. But having played around with her a little bit and, you know, looking at her out of the package, I can say that I'm pretty excited about this design. And it comes down to a, a few key areas, uh, specifically the head, and then I like her loincloth. I really like the design. I like the green jewel that's down there. But, uh, yeah, the, I mean, the majority of this body is just a naked female. So you've got a lot of skin, and it's all painted as well. And the uh, joints in this figure are painted. We've seen that quite a bit. You will see some flaking. You know, like I, I say it every time, it's hard to avoid that. Um, once you paint a joint, you know, the friction is going to get in there. I like the attempt to keep everything as clean as possible. And some of the plastic, like this joint is mostly flaked all the way off. And uh, it's pretty close to the paint. Like it's very, very uh, matching. It's not too noticeable that the joint is now mostly unpainted. There is, however, one area that's really weird. Her right wrist joint, and you know, hopefully it's, it's just my figure maybe. I, I'm not sure why it would be. But this joint is black, or kind of a dark gray. So now that the, the paint is really flaked, it's really hard to not see that there is a, a very different color joint in there, which is just really, really weird. I'm not sure why. That's maybe my biggest gripe with this figure. But beyond that, as far as the general look goes, we've got, uh, you know, like I said, a mostly naked female. She does have a, a harness with uh, some, like, patinaed... Uh, breast armor there. It's got a little rust paint on it. I, you know, I've mentioned I do like the uh, the loincloth that she has. I like this big silver, uh, like, anchor that sits on her belt almost. That thing would have to weigh a ton. And then we've got uh, this green kind of bobble in the middle. She does have one gauntlet as far as, you know, actual knight-type armor, and then she's got a leather one over on this arm. And then we've got some knight-style boots with just some kind of basic painting. I would imagine that, you know, based on the idea that she's a barbarian, that she doesn't have access to the most advanced armor, so she's just kind of got standard shin guards with very minimal paint on it, just kind of gunmetal and then silver. So she's kind of a basic figure, but at the same time, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it kind of plays up the idea that she is a barbarian, and she doesn't really have a full set of armor she makes do with kind of what she has. Now, as far as the head sculpt on this figure goes, I think there is... Uh, a lot to say about this figure, despite the fact that she is, does have kind of a basic expression on her face. And if if I could have one thing different on this figure, it would be that she had maybe a bit of an expression in terms of, like, clenched teeth or maybe a grimace. Something that shows that she maybe has a little anger, a little fire behind her. 
But I do think this, this head sculpt is pretty solid. She does have a slight smirk too, so I'll take it. Everything's very clean on her face. The lips are, are nice. They're kind of they're kind of red, but a little pink. Eyes are very clean. I really, really dig this design on the side of her head. I love the metallic paint. The tampography is very, very clean. Uh, we've got basically a full head of hair, except for the fact, you know, half of it's shaved off over here. But I like the design of this hair that's braided, you know, kind of all the way through. We've got braids that come down to these little bobbles in her hair. And then there's wash all over it. So either you know, it either shows that, one, it's dirty, or that, you know, it helps to bring out the sculpt, and it definitely helps to bring out the sculpt. There's a lot of line work in there. kind of gives you a little windswept look, and then the braids really tie things together. It really, really goes to the whole barbarian, you know, Viking type of thing. So I really dig it. I like everything about the head sculpt. That's easily the most striking aspect of this figure, and I think they did an exceptional job with everything from the sculpt to the paint on this one. Now, as far as accessories go, we do have kind of the basic assortment. Not too many, but not fewer than any other figure. We, of course, have all the requisite adapters, and we've got, you know, the sheath that you can put around her shoulder or around her waist to holster her sword. And you can see I've already changed her up here. I've got her pauldrons on her. And this is a figure where I'm not entirely convinced that you need them or you don't. It's like, which one do you prefer? And then kind of go with it. Because I like her with the pauldrons on, but at the same time, I think she looks just fine without them as well. It feeds into the whole barbarian type of figure, type of character. But these are really nice. They are like the standard knight type of pauldrons, They're like the same ones that uh, Delphina comes with, but they're just a lot dirtier. They have a lot of patina on them. You know, like she's either reclaimed them from battle or they're just worn and have seen a lot of use. Beyond that, though, we have uh, three weapons. We have got the standard kind of sword here. This is the weapon I don't think really goes with her in particular. It just doesn't seem like a sword that she would have. I feel like the other two really fit her character. But, you know, it's a Mythic Legion, so they're going to get something like this. So this one, you know, kind of plays into just a standard sword. No real frills on it. Nothing crazy. Uh, not a crazy color scheme or anything like that either. We have got what is my favorite weapon that she comes with. This, uh, you know, kind of a hatchet-style axe here. It's got a wooden handle with a very, very black blade on it, which I think is fantastic. It's got some design work on the blade itself. Very cool. She can hold this in either hand just fine. And then we've got the big boy here. Oh, drop that. We've got the big boy here. This is, you know, the uh, the big, huge Warhammer type of weapon. We've seen this a lot with dwarves, with goblins. Uh, she can hold this in one hand. She can hold this in two hands just fine. Uh, this one is, uh, you know, kind of dirtied up. It's got a, a bronze kind of brownie color scheme, kind of what's on the hilt of her sword. And then there's a few silver accents on it. So this one's really cool. I think it really plays up to her character. But at the end of the day, this one is uh, by and large my favorite. I really, really dig this design here. So at the end of the day, you know, I wasn't blown away by this one when I originally saw her. I wasn't clamoring to get her out of the package either. But I'm glad I got it got into her sooner rather than later because she is pretty cool. I do like her design. I like the, the Red Sonia kind of vibe I've got here. The female barbarian is a bit of a different thing. It's a slight change up from the norm for this line, so I do like that. And then, you know, I really dig that face paint like I mentioned. So overall, I think she's a pretty fun figure. My only real gripes are that, again, we've got flaking paint in the joints, which is hard to, to avoid when you paint the joints. And then that right hand joint with the uh, with the gray plastic in there is really weird and it really stands out to me. You know, now that I've seen it, I can't unsee it, that kind of thing. But overall, yeah, she's a fun figure and I get why people wanted me to review her sooner rather than later. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's Advent of Decay, Juno the Crusher figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.